So here's the last part of um, our unit for this week. So last time we met Sam the butterfly and learned how to write functions to keep him on the screen. Today we'll learn about the AND and OR functions and use those to improve the on-screen function in our um, Sam the butterfly game. So consider the following statements. Are they true or false? Sugar is sweet. Ice is hot. Is that true or false? Sugar is sweet. Is that true? Ice is hot. Is that true or false? All right, now let's look at some with and. Sugar is sweet and ice is cold. Okay, that part's true. Sugar is sweet. Ice is cold is true. So sugar is sweet and ice is cold. That's true. Sugar is sweet and ice is hot. Well, that part's true, but that part is false, right? So that means this whole sentence, sugar is sweet and ice is hot, is false. Sugar is sweet or ice is cold. Well, both parts of that's true, so or, that means the whole thing is true. Sugar is sweet or ice is hot. So one part's true and one part's false. Up here where we had one part true and one part false, it was false because the false part made the whole sentence false with and. But with or, we can say sugar is sweet or ice is hot. Well, even though ice is hot is false, sugar is sweet is true. So we can say that this whole sentence is true because one of the parts is true with or. So now we'll look at two new functions in Dr. Racket. And will return true only if both inputs are true. Or we'll return true if at least one input is true. So let's look at this one. 2 is less than 5 and 0 is equal to 6. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do the parts first. 2 is less than 5. So I'll make all this a little bigger. This is my, this is, um, I already have that cage, the uh, sound of the butterfly open. All right. Two is less than five. Less than two, five. And we know that's true. All right. Zero is equal to six. Zero equal zero, six. And we know that's going to be false. So what happens if we and those together? So we'll say and, and then we'll do the first one, less than 2, 5, and we'll do the second part, equal 0, 6. So we know that this part is true, and this part is false. With and, what's going to happen? We have a true and a false. With and, that means they're going to be false, because in our definition of and, both parts have to be true for the AND function to return true. 2 is less than 4, or 4 is equal to 6. So let's try those parts. 2 is less than 4. I believe that's true. What did they say? Or 4 is equal to 6. So let's do equal 4. 6, we know that's false, so let's OR those together. Can you still see that? Raise it up a little. So let's OR those together. OR, the first part we wanted was 2 is less than 4. The second part we wanted was equal. 4 and 6. So we know that this part is true and this part is false. We saw with an AND, if one part was false, then that made the whole thing false. With OR, as long as any part is true, OR is going to return true. So even though part of the OR was false, also part of it was true, which made it true. So now we can go to our on-screen command. So let's go back here and look. 
our on-screen function. All right, remember before it was returning, so it's a, it takes a number and returns a Boolean. Remember, and we were testing whether safe left was true. And so if safe left was true, then Sam was stopped on the left-hand side. Um, as long as it was safe. There. But we could only do one side of the screen at a time. But now that we have this or thing, we can't, well, so let's, so let's see. Let's make a, okay, okay, it's good. We do have um, two examples, but let's make two more examples. Let's check safe right. Because now, and let's check, we'll see, we should fail, I think, a couple of those. Oh, actually, I should have made them bigger. Let me make those bigger. Okay, we did fail. Uh, yep, okay, we did fail because we, we don't, we're not even checking safe right. But let's make, let's make one really big safe right, like um, 500. Six forty by four eight six. Oh no, that's that's that is safe. Let's do nine hundred. All right, now. So here's one part. We know we need another part, and we need or. So let's. I think you can actually highlight this and put a left paren, and it actually puts the whole thing in paren. So I can put or right there. All right, now that's one part. I need another part, and that's going to be safe, right, uh, x. So I'm going to say if, uh, let's see, wait, do we want or or and? Ah, I think we want and, right? We want him to be safe on both sides. So and, All right, or means he would just be safe on one side, and he needs to be safe on both sides. So run that and see if we pass the tests. Save right 900 gave true. Um, let's look. Oh, duh, I didn't. You might not. You might be in the same boat. So we need to. Um, uh, I left that as an exercise for you. So hopefully you fixed safe, your own safe right, but I didn't. Um, let's see. Uh, our thing is 640 by 480, so I gave you the harder one, didn't I? Um, so we want to say only, we want to say that visible on the right means that uh, let's say so visible on the left would mean that it was greater than minus 50. So for this one, we want to make sure he's less than. And um, I don't even remember 640. So it's 640 plus 50. 690. But anyway, and let, let the computer do the math for me. Right, so on the left-hand side, he can go just a little bit off, and the right-hand side, the max is 640, so he can go a little bit off there. So that should be right. So our test did a good job in saving us. Let's see if we pass it now. Got a wrong. Oh, I'll put a plus there. There. Oh, I don't have an X in there. Um, let's see. In that case, X is less than here. We want to make sure, or greater than. Here we want to make sure X is less than. All right. So now I have, is X less than the, the, the max plus the safety? Okay. Try again. All right, no test errors. I'm gonna go all the way to the left to see what happens. I'm still pushing and it's stopped because his little 
part of him is still there. I'm going to go all the way to the right. I'm still pushing, still pushing, and he stopped because this part of his little wing is there. That's the last click. And you can see 680 is the last click because um, our, our arrows are going in clicks of 10. 680 is the last click that's less than 690. All right, cool for that. So we, we changed on screen to be to make sure he was safe left and safe right. So that's why we needed that new function and to be able to do two things at once. So now um, you stop and go to page 23 and you change the on screen to use the and function and then you try it in Dr. Racket. So pause now and do that. Okay. All right, so it gives you some uh, extra tests. So you can test either with the ones I did, or here's some other tests that you can put into um, the cage function. So put these in and um, continue to test. Let me know if you have any problems. Two ways to solve the on screen word problem. All right, so we could have put our actual tests into on screen, right? Here's the math that says is x greater than net minus 50, negative 50. Here's the one that says is uh, x l l uh, less than 690. Or we could have done which one we wanted to, the way we did it in our game. On screen just says safe left and safe right. So it leaves the math of these guys off to these individual function. Does it matter which one you use? So I'm going to say yes, because these could change independently. So I don't need to have to worry about, um, you know, what the rules are for left and right or top or bottom, right? Because I may want to add top and bottom. And then I have two more rules in here. Or maybe Sam can hyperfly, and that would have some rules about on screen. So that just keeps making my on screen more complicated and more complicated by, with more rules. Whereas this way, I can split out the rules on screen. He has to be both because of and, safe left, and safe right. And and, just like some other things, takes multiple um, inputs. So I could actually have safe left, safe right, safe top, safe bottom safe corner, whatever I wanted, and um, put all those together in on screen. But then I can put the actual definition of what does safe left mean. I'll put that in its own function. What does safe right mean? It's a little bit more typing, but it makes your, your um, program a whole lot more flexible and easy to read in the future. So there's more to being a good writer, more to being a writer than just good spelling and grammar. There's more to being an architect or artist than bridge building or coloring a canvas. All involve an element of design. So there's more to being a programmer than just writing code. As you've learned through um, this summer and this year, um, anybody could just type out a list of instructions, but being able to design a program that does what you want, that's easy to change, that's easy to experiment with, um, is that is um, what makes a programmer. So you're able to write sophisticated programs that include multiple functions, and you're ready to consider what it means to design the code you write. So now you already can write a bunch of different kinds of programs. So now we're going to start talking even more about what design means. So suppose you want to build a car, but it's not working right. What would you do? Test each part of the car one at a time. Same is true for your code. If you have a bug, it's much easier to find when every function is simple and easy to test, and complex functions are built out of simpler ones. By designing multiple simple functions, it's, it lets programmers be lazy. Consider a video game with a few characters to keep on the screen. If you change the game to work on a different size screen, um, then you would have to, to change the function, change all your tests. 
lazy programmers only need to change it in one place. So a lot of times in programming, we, we talk about this idea of being lazy. And we don't mean that we don't work hard. We mean that when it's time to work, we want to change as little as possible. So if, if, yeah, if, if you have a game that works on your computer screen and um, somebody wants to play it on the phone, that should be a small number of changes. That's what usually we mean by lazy when we talk about being lazy programmers. Badly designed programs can work just fine, but they become hard to read, hard to test, easy to screw up if things change, which sometimes that idea of easy to screw up if things change, we call brittle, you know, like a, a brittle um, object is something that's easy to break. And so we'll, you know, somebody will say, hey, I need to make this change. And everybody's scared to make the change because they don't want to break anything. As you grow and develop as a programmer, or with your, in your case, even not as a programmer, but just um, as a writer and a researcher, you need to think beyond just making it work. Think about how to actually design what you're working on. And that's the whole idea that we talked about early this year of model thinking. So does your model um, let things be changed in a way that um, you only need to change them in one or two or a few places and you can um, experiment. Then it's, it's easier to make changes um, when things are well designed. So strive for well designed code. All right, the boundary detection code you wrote for safe left and safe right is very useful for radio games. You can stop a character from traveling through a wall or regenerate a character once it has left the screen. Right, if we wanted the effect where somebody goes off the screen to the right and then back on, well, we can look and see if he ever gets to be greater than safe left, we could reset him to zero, something like that. So you've learned this week um, how to use Booleans to constrain where elements can move in a game. Um, next, we'll use, uh, we'll learn how to use Booleans to move game elements based on which key a user presses while playing the game. Thanks.